to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The earth is the Lord's and all that therein is, the compass of the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and prepared it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall rise up in his holy place? Even he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, and that hath not lift up his mind unto vanity, nor sworn to deceive his neighbor. He shall receive blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, even of them that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord strong and mighty, even the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory, even the Lord of hosts? He is the King of glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. first lesson is written in the 15th chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning at the first verse. The word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? The steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took all unto him, all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another. But the bird divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, an horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. 
And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Cadmonites, and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Riphaims, and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. Here ends the first lesson. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the 26th chapter of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 47th verse. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were there with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priests and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? In that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are you come out again as a thief against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I say daily, I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hand on me. But all this was done that the scripture of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Here ends the second lesson. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And you, thy ministers, with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and in all our dangers and necessities. Stretch forth thy right hand to help and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Confident that God hears us when we cry out to him in our need, we now place our petitions before him. Let us pray for God's holy church throughout the world, for our Diocese of Norwich, for our Bishop Grab, and for the benefits of Colgate and Tumland. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and all world leaders, that all nations may work together in care and compassion for our world and all its peoples as one human family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may be ever aware of the suffering of God's people and come to their aid led by love and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who feel isolated and alone. May this be a time to be with the Lord, to rest in God's love, to pray for each other and for those working so hard to care for the sick and dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all people who seek guidance in where God is calling them. May this be a time of inspiration and strength to renew their faith and inspire in them vocations to service in the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our medical personnel, especially those who risk their lives to help those suffering from the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our loved ones near and far and for those who have asked for our prayers, that they may know the Lord's healing power and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have recently died, especially Paul Rayner, Christine Hammond, and Archabbot Bonaventure of Nabal. For all our beloved dead, and for all who mourn, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. 
Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through her intercession, hear the prayers of all who come to this place and surround them with your watchful care. We ask this through Christ our 